All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is the Washington Associ Hospitality Association press briefing, and um, we're going to be giving you a lot of information today. Um, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Anthony Antone, President and CEO of Washington Hospitality Association. My name is Jackie Coe. I'm Communications Manager for the Washington Hospitality Association for the Seattle Restaurant Alliance and the Seattle Hotel Association. And also with me today is Nikki Reading of Reading Communications. So um, we have uh, quite a bit of uh, to discuss today. Um, uh, Anthony will be uh, talking about the governor's recent announcement. We'll also be giving an update on restaurant closures and some new data that we have uh, compiled, as well as we have data from the National Restaurant Association, a survey data specific to Washington State. So with regards to that, um, I will tell you that this uh, webinar is being recorded and will be made available to you later by a um, link that I'll be sending out to the group afterwards. Um, so uh, go ahead and I guess um, send me an email into my inbox if you need um, a recording. Uh, that is Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-E-C at wahospitality.org. And we'll mention that um, on the back end as well. we'll um, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions of Anthony. We'll be monitoring uh, that and ask that you go ahead and please put your questions in the chat so that we can go in order. So with that, I'd like to hand it on over to Anthony Antone with uh, President and CEO of the Washington Hospitality Association. Anthony, um, what can you share about uh, your thoughts about today's announcement? Jackie, thank you so much. And, and thank you to everyone for being here and continuing to tell the story about um, how these decisions are devastating small businesses across the state. The, the governor's announcement today to extend the shutdown for another three weeks means that thousands of restaurants will continue to suffer and hundreds of, uh, over 100,000 people will continue to be unemployed uh, through the holiday season. In the last month, when the governor uh, announced restaurants were shutting down, we were shocked. We had made so much progress together to keep restaurants and our hospitality businesses safe. We had adopted restrictions that no other state had adopted. We'd gone to extreme measures. You've heard health department after health department compliment uh, the compliance among restaurants and the way they were going the extra steps, which is why we saw numbers that less than one half of 1% of cases were coming from restaurants. So last, last month's announcement was shocking. This one's flat out disappointing because of anything uh, and, and, and angry, anger inducing because if anything, um, the 7,000 cases today proves that without a safe outlet, this is not the right decision. And so with case counts, case counts going up um, while restaurants have been shut down, um, with 7,000 cases just today, or just reported yesterday, continue just to tell the story that people need a safe outlet. People can come into restaurants and be safe and under our hospitality and be safe. And then they make better choices uh, than they're making now. So this announcement is both heartbreaking and outrageous on, on its face. Um, our local restaurants are paying the price for a health crisis that they have not contributed to, and honestly, instead could be part of the solution to. And while I've been saying this all along, um, it's now the data that's really pointing to this is not good public policy to keep shutting down our main streets and our, and our small businesses. The hospitality industry uh, has been trained to have great safety protocols. Uh, before all this came along, we had certifications and food worker cards and have been trained how to keep people safe. And then we've gone above and beyond in adopting a different regulations. And we worked together before this to do so. Uh, and again, less than one half a percent of cases were coming from our industry, uh, showing that when you provide someone a safe outlet, uh, it can be done and it can save lives. We've known for months that private gatherings are driving case counts. Uh, we knew that the Thanksgiving holiday with families gathering around the state um, would put uh, pressure on the system. Um, and we pleaded uh, with everyone to stop blaming uh, people that had nothing to do with the issue and let's focus on the things we can work together. And that's beating the virus together. The problem is when people gather in their own homes um, and privately not in safe settings. 
when your restaurants were shut down, we advocated for a relief plan. We talked about that that four week shutdown would cost the industry around 800 million. That's a conservative estimate. That's just the restaurant inside, not the lodging or the other entertainment business that have been shut down. The relief package offered 50 million. And while that's a good start, again, that four week period was just 800 million. Now we have another uh, pushing six, 700, 800 million on top of that. In 2020, it's estimated that our industry is gonna lose $10 billion in sales now that we know we're closed for the rest of the year. The amount of relief, it needs to be as extreme as the amount of damage that has been occurring and been put on this industry. And there's still not enough support for the 100,000 employees who are out of job during these holidays. As an example of how much relief is needed, just five days into the application process for a grant that will help with just some of the costs not covered because we don't have any revenue in, more than 15, actually more than 16,000 applications um, have been turned in. We only have enough funding to fund 2,500 of them. It just gives you a small sample size that if our applications end up hitting 30 or 40,000 applications at this pace, the money needed just to help people with a small amount that's being applied for is gonna be 600, 700 million. We need to either open our businesses up or get real serious about relief. Uh, to put all this into perspective um, and the permanent loss in our industry in just the first six months of, of the pandemic, uh, before this next round of shutdowns began, um, we have learned about 3,000 restaurants have permanently closed in just those first six months. That's nearly 25% of our state's restaurants or one in four that were open prior to the pandemic. Um, this has come at, at the worst time, which is supposed to be our most joyous time of the year. For many restaurants, holidays is the time where you, where you are able to earn the revenue, support your employees, provide the bonuses, provide your, your customers with joy, uh, and then we get through the winter months. Uh, that is now all gone with today's announcement. We need state government, we need federal government to come together and get really serious about supporting Main Street. 90% of those 3,000 restaurants that I mentioned earlier are independents. The impact is on the small businesses, on the independent folks. Um, a lot of times people hear about business relief. These are not corporations. These are the fa restaurant you know down the street. This is the diner, this is your favorite pub. Uh, these are community places with people who are chasing dreams. And yet again, we keep snuffing those dreams out. Uh, these people have put on loans and put their homes at risk and put their families at risk to, do, uh, to earn a blue collar income, to pursue a dream and to support their families moving forward. And it's being taken away for something that's just nothing to do with them. In fact, they've gone above and beyond to try to reduce the spread of the virus and be a part of the solution. Uh, we employ the governor to reconsider the decision. We, we, we urge Congress people to set aside partisan fights and get serious about relief. And we urge legislators across the state to start talking now about how to save our restaurants. We're not gonna, and our small businesses, we're not gonna be able to save everyone. But if we start working really hard right now, um, when we come together for whenever a session starts, we can help many. Uh, I'm, I'm beyond frustrated, I'm beyond um, angry. This does not need to be done, um, but also don't let this confuse the fact that we do need to wear masks. In spite of the, of the decision made today, I do urge everyone to practice safe distancing. If the outlet you're gonna have for socialization is gonna be somewhere else, wear a mask, practice social distancing, and we'll do everything we can to get you back to the safe environments where you know you can do those things without having the fear. I hope members of the public will join me in asking on behalf of thousands of small business owners that have closed their doors already and the thousand more who will probably jump, join them shortly and the, the tens of thousand employees who are without a job this holiday season um, to please have their community leaders start coming together and make better decisions and start saving our industry. Uh, we need a plan. We knew this was coming for a while. You heard in my tone last month that cases weren't going to get any better. And so here we are. What are we going to do to help restaurants? What are we going to do to help our bowling alleys? What are we going to do to save our main streets? 
Um, with that, um, I'm open for any questions and, uh, and I'd love to have a dialogue uh, with uh, the members gathered, the members of the media gathered here today. Yeah, and Anthony, I wanna go ahead and start. We did have um, uh, Dave Gallagher with the Bellingham Herald asked several questions on the front end. Um, and I'll just go ahead and rephrase those. Uh, can you estimate the number of restaurants that are temporarily closed or restaurants that are permanently closed based on the um, closure data that we have compiled? Uh, we've able to identify about 2,400 of the restaurants that are permanently closed. We were fairly confident there's another six or 700 out there that uh, we just need to discern is the temporary closure um, or are they permanently closed and which ones are they? Uh, we are continuing to work at that. We had just completed a calling program where we literally called every restaurant in the state to determine if they're open, um, look up their status and try to get really accurate data. So we believe that uh, our initial estimates of 35% of restaurants to be closed permanently was accurate before this pandemic. And based on the new polling that came back, Jack, you referenced earlier, um, increasing that number to 45% probably feels accurate based on what we're seeing in the, in the numbers and the hard count so far. And um, Dan has, uh, Dave has a few other questions, but should we go ahead and pause there and talk a little bit more about the, um, the closure data and um, how we compile that? I, I think it, it's important to know um, how we, uh, what period that we collected that data and who, how we obtained that data. Can you speak a little bit about that? Um, because I think it's, it's um, that will help folks understand how far reaching it is. You bet. In September and October, we employed our team to call every restaurant in the States, um, of which they did, find out if they're open, find out if they're answering the phones, and then if they're not open, do the research to find out why. And so it took a while to call every restaurant in the state, as you can imagine. Um, and then we really categorized them in confirmed open or confirmed closed or somewhere in the middle. Um, and uh, that's kind of where, where that data was done. And then we had it all ready to go. Um, and, and we have to enter a lot of 15,000 records. We're a lot to enter into the system. Um, and we just have that available today. What we've learned from that impact is the dominant source of loss so far has been among independent restaurants with 90% of the restaurants closed being considered independent and then a really high number of them based in the ethnic menus um, uh, in, in, in various ethnic categories. And so those have been the hardest hit businesses so far. A lot of those um, were very specific to, to the dreams and uh, pursuing what we all said America could be. And um, uh, we need to get back to who we are in that. So I wanna follow up um, with Dave Gallagher had a few other questions um, that he sent in ahead of time. And then Drew Mickelson from King TV has a question that I'll get to. Um, so uh, for Dave's questions, for the ones that were temporarily closed or doing takeout, what's the general consensus of how long many of them can survive in the current phase? Did you know any trends between um, rural uh, versus urban in terms of restaurant closures? And then along with buying takeout and gift certificates, do you have any advice for customers who want to help local restaurants? So again, the first one of uh, temporarily closed or doing takeout, what was the general consensus of how long they could survive in the current phase? It's going to be a business by business and community by community decision. Um, and what communities can do, one, landlords, please understand uh, the reason we're here is not because they are not good businesses or not they're not well-intentioned. They're here because of bad recommendations from the health department. And so please work with uh, your local operations to keep them going. I think the more that, that landlords can understand what people are going through and help them get through it um, will be a long way to helping people go through there. Also, I'd encourage your local communities to figure out how we can rally around them. Um, we're seeing communities uh, do a lot from um, community grant programs to really uh, celebrating their restaurants and helping them in their permitting, moving out outdoors um, or finding creative ways to get um, a, a permanent structure uh, open on multiple sides. So we are seeing some communities out there say, it is a priority for us to save Main Street. We're gonna work, off on this, work with us on this. And so I would urge communities around the state to, to rally around and say, what can we do to help right here in our hometown on our main street? So we still have this fabric of our community moving forward. 
uh, as a guest, a couple of things. Uh, one, um, don't give up on us. Uh, please keep ordering out. I, I feel like the pesky friend who keeps asking for a ride to the airport, but <laughs> I didn't take, I, we're, we're struggling here and we need you to keep going and we appreciate your loyalty. We appreciate your patience. We appreciate that a lot of businesses have had learned how to do to go um, and had to learn the business over again and do new packaging. So please don't give up on us. Please continue your commitment to save your, your local businesses. And then please write your congressperson, write your state senator and write the governor and saying my business, my local restaurant, my favorite place, the heart of my community was doing it safely and please open them back up. Anthony, in the data, did you see any difference between urban versus rural? I think that was some of the question, Dan's. It, it is a community by community uh, impact. Um, King County did have a, a tremendous uh, loss. Um, not surprising because a lot of tourism um, is based in King County. But then we saw several of the highest numbers be in our rural community. Um, not every rural community was down as far, but several of them uh, had, had alarming numbers. So. Uh, it was it was a mixed bag and it was a community by community issue. A lot of it had to been depended on how much that that community depended on tourism. Um, but uh, but every every one of these lost streams is, is a heartbreak. Good deal. I think that um, Drew Mickelson was the next one that um, uh, had a, a question. Drew, do you want to go ahead and frame your question? Yes, Mr. Anton, can you hear me? I can. Hi, Drew. Good afternoon. The governor today said that he believes with scientific certainty, people sitting across from each other at a restaurant without masks for an hour at a time is not safe, is not healthy. And he said, uh, is it beyond, I think the word he used was beyond reasonable doubt that uh, having people that close in restaurants is just not safe right now. Uh, you, you don't agree with that vehemently don't agree with that. I feel like um, the scientists back in whatever that was, the 1500s who learned that the world was round and not flat and had to talk their leaders into the fact that the world is in fact round. Um, and so we know that restaurants are safe. Rose, restaurants have proven safe when you track cases back to where they came from. They're not coming from restaurants. And when they follow the rules, we're almost finding no cases coming back to restaurants. And so we know that we, by working together prior to this spike and this out, this last round, we found a mix that no other state had found. Us in Oregon had, had found that same mix of reduce capacity, wear masks when you mingle, don't mingle other than going to, to the restroom. Uh, all the other things, the six feet apart, um, we'd gone to some measures and, and done them all, a lot of them CDC regulations, and they had results. So when we keep referring to federal data, when other states don't believe in masks or don't have six foot distancing or don't even believe the virus is real, I feel like we're comparing an apple to a, a grapefruit. It just, it doesn't make sense to me, particularly when we see the results we've had. And then without any, without any good data, um, putting people out of business um, and, and ending dreams. It's uh, <laughs> between anger and frustration, I'm not sure quite how to describe my emotion. Um, Anthony, Christine Sherrod with the Tacoma News Tribune has the next question. Christine, uh, go ahead and let Hi, you- Christine. Oh, hi. Um, I actually uh, didn't totally have a question. I was just curious about if the data was going to be available after the call, which Nikki um, responded to. Okay. Yes. I might have something in a bit, but caught me off guard. <laughs> I think the, uh, the next one was Amanda Rowley. Hi, Amanda. Oh, hello. Uh, looks like Drew asked my question about the restaurant situation. However, I was wondering if maybe you could speak to Spokane County and maybe what that looks like as far as restaurants and uh, businesses impacted here. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, I can get back to you on some specific Spokane um, data. I don't have it at my, at my fingertips, but we can, get, we can follow up on that. I, will, I can tell you, I've talked to many operators in Spokane um, and, and they echo the sense of desperation and frustration that I'm hearing around the state. That their, all their dreams, all their life savings, everything they've worked their lives for or their careers for um, are at risk um, 
without a valid reason uh, and that we could be working together uh, to beat the virus, to provide safe outlets. Um, the, the sense of desperation and frustration I hear out of Spokane is equal to that I hear out of Clark County, which is equal to that I hear out of Anacortes or, or name your area of the states. I think operators uh, just don't understand um, when they've worked so hard to get here, um, why, why we would um, keep pursuing a path that the 7,000 cases announced yesterday prove isn't the right, isn't the right path. Anthony, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the National Restaurant Association? They did a survey and then they also uh, were able to break out some of their survey uh, information and responses by Washington State. So what, um, share a little bit about what were some of the more uh, uh, surprising and, and shocking reports there. I think some of the numbers were pretty, pretty. Yeah, I think the numbers are, are, are bleak. I, mean, I've, I've, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm always talking the negative, but it's the situation we're in. I think, Jackie, what was most shocking is, is that the, the, the national survey of 45% uh, about what's going to happen if we move from here seemed to so closely align the state data we're, we're tracking separately. So if you track the trajectory, the trajectory of where we're at and what we know, it seems to indicate um, the amount of devastation, the amount of industry wipeout and mainstream wipeout um, seems to be getting confirmed by different sources in different areas. Um, so I'd like to say that assures us that when we talk, talk about data, we're accurate, um, but I'm more heartbroken that I'm gonna have to face that many more operators who are gonna lose everything from their business to their home, to their employees. Um. Any other questions? Um, we have, you can ask questions in the chat. Um, just let me know what questions you have. Um, I think the, the closer data, it continues to be the number one thing that we are asked about um, with regards to um, how many restaurants are closed. And um, it is, uh, it, there's some interesting um, ways about that because some close temporarily, some close permanently, but, um, you know, early on before, uh, you know, we, we did some estimates with regards to um, what we were budgeting for at 35% and, and hope that we were wrong, but sadly. Um, Imagine you guys. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think one of the things that did surprise me, um, Jackie, and, and now that we know that we're closed for the rest of 2020 we'll and we're able to project the amount of loss the industry is going to have in 2020, uh, the idea that the, the industry could see north of $10 billion in, in, in a, a loss in year-over-year -year sales um, when almost every one of these businesses is made up of small business is 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 shocking. Um, I, I knew I knew yeah, it. Yeah, I, I heard that too. that number is, is so tough. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, next question is uh, toss it to Amanda because it comes on the heels of uh, Amanda Rowley um, on restaurant closures. So Amanda, would you like to ask your question? Yes, so wondering how, any idea how many restaurants and businesses are expected to close maybe after this additional three week extension here in Washington state, or if you could say specifically with Spokane County. Yeah, if, if, if the 45% number ends up being true, um, then that'll be an additional 3000 restaurants would equal right around that 45%. Um, and so if all those things track and there's no other relief, if, if, if leaders in Congress and leaders in the state don't step up and, and, and actively work to, to save businesses, I think that's the trajectory we're headed on. So I think another 3,000 businesses lost is probably uh, the most accurate trajectory we've seen so far. Thank you. Um, Anthony, can you believe we weren't talking about this? I mean, I'm, it's just so frustrating because we could be doing better together. I have no doubt that the number of cases that were announced today would be lower if we were providing safe outlets. And, and I think that's when we talk about 3000 dreams ending, um, when there was a better path in front of us, I just, I, I urge the governor, I urge others to reconsider this position and work with us to reopen our businesses. Anthony, the next question we have is from uh, Dan Gallagher, or Dave, Dave Gallagher, excuse me, again with the Bellingham. Hi, Dave. Dave, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Sorry. 
for you. Um, I'll go ahead. It looks like he is, uh, Dave, are you able to unmute yourself? I, I have. I, can you hear me now? Oh, there you go. Hey, there, there you are, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Um, what would we, you we tell? We have three more weeks with 2020, and then we don't have to figure out Zoom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> While we were muting and unmuting each other, I think was what was happening. Um, what would you tell uh, restaurant owners that are thinking about defying the governor's orders and reopening indoor dining during this phase? Yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> I understand the desperation. When you're, when you're facing losing everything, a lot of small businesses um, had to personally guarantee their home in order to secure their loans. Um, it's how they paid their family. I mean, this is, these are not corporations. These are, these are mom and pop places. And uh, they're at a point of desperation that, that no one should have to be asked to face. And here we are. So I, I understand the desperation. I think if they're seriously considering about it, um, please don't forget the things that we know do work. Masks work. No mingling works. Six feet distancing works. I, I would say we all have a, an obligation to beat the virus. Um, and, and we do those things by doing the things that we all agree that they do work. And don't forget about that uh, uh, just in your moment of frustration or desperation and in, in how you keep your dream alive. Um, so we are at uh, almost at 30 minutes. Um, other questions, and by the way, we will be uh, sending out uh, this link. This uh, webinar is being recorded and uh, can send out a link um, to anyone who wants it afterwards um, so it's available on demand um, so that you can go ahead and, and get a recording of it. Um, any other questions that you would like to throw in the chat? All right. Um, uh, any final thoughts, comments, Anthony, I, um, Nikki, I think you had something. It looks like there's a final question from Christine at the TNT. Um, so try Wait. to go ahead and ask that. There you go. Christine. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm wondering, looking forward, like now that we're looking officially at 2021 as being a potential, you know, return to what the 2020 normal was for six months of half capacity um, dining. What do you anticipate the, I guess, like the first half of 2021 looking like knowing that even when indoor dining is able to return, that it will probably look um, much like it has when it was around in 2020, how, how much does that affect some of the closure numbers um, that you have found so far? What's your outlook on that? Because I imagine we'll see a windfall eventually. Uh, can you mean when you say windfall, do you describe that to me just so I make sure I answer your question correctly? Uh, if you anticipate, no, like when we go back to indoor dining, let's say at some point in the first few months of 2021, being um, a little bit pessimistic there, uh, does your data give you any outlook on how many more restaurants will close or could close if um, that restricted dining persists for many months in 2021, potentially without the kind of um, full scale relief that um, you've been calling for for so long? Well, we know another round of Triple P would be, um, it got us through summer. I would also say that, that due to the ingenuity and creativity and the passion, um, people in, in August and September were beginning to feel like, okay, we, we now know how to run our businesses. We've learned a lot about how to do to-go packaging. We've learned about a lot about out outdoor dining, which except for the wind in many communities, I think outdoor dining could return in spring um, in, in, a, in, a, in a larger capacity. Um, and so I, I think people were feeling like, okay, I had to redo everything I knew, but I've done it. And, and come September, October, uh, people are feeling like I, I know how to not, not lose money and, and maybe get closer to breaking even. Um, and, uh, and then this happened. And so I don't really know what's going to happen on January 4th. Um, I know that without safe outlets, people 
have not made good choices. Um, and if, ca if cases are really high come January, I, I don't know where we're going to be. Um, so let me skip past that. Um, and, and if you look into spring and when the legislature comes together and the legislature starts putting together a plan um, on how to open businesses up in that first part of, of, of the legislature in the first three weeks, we hope, um, and then start talking about how we work together uh, to do it safely. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to have uh, spring um, represent hope. Uh, but I think we've got several tough months in front of us. I know for my own family business, when I grew up, we had family businesses in Pierce County in January and February were our slowest months of the year. And, and we always prayed for a great holiday because we knew that January and February were going to be slow and they were going to be tough. Um, and so we've removed um, that time of year where hospitality, um, you know, saves up their nuts for winter um, and, and there's nothing in the tree now. So I, I think uh, it's going to be a tough winter, uh, regardless what happens. Um, and, uh, and that's why the, the relief um, can get here soon enough and the urgency to get Congress and state leaders to work together now can't be strong enough. And Anthony, I think um, we've talked a lot about restaurants, but we need to be really Thank clear you. that it, hospitality is more than just restaurants. Case in point, uh, just last week, um, you know, we found data that indicated that the Seattle hotels have the lowest occupancy on the West Coast at uh, roughly about 22 percent. Um, revenues in many cases are down percent. So uh, the hospitality industry is the largest private employer in Washington state. You know, Anthony, what are you hearing about some of your hoteliers with a symbiotic relationship with restaurants if, if their surrounding restaurants are impacted with regards to their dining options? It affects our hotels and the overall economies. Yeah, that's a, that is a great point. Um, the, 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 the pandemic has been happening up and down the, the West Coast. Um, and, and across the country. And yet to see Seattle has the lowest occupancy rate um, of all of them, it talks a lot about how our communities not handled it compared to the way the other communities have. And, and these are progressive communities who want to do the right thing. It's not like we're comparing ourselves to other parts of the country um, where we don't have the same cultural approach. Um, this is the West Coast in, in our brothers and sisters in Oregon and California and, and other areas. And so uh, I was reviewing just the lodging numbers earlier today and many communities were seeing um, revenues down over 70%. Um, and I know individual hotels in, in some communities are even higher than that. Uh, they can't meet their, de their debt service. Um, some national finance groups are saying that without federal relief, as many as 49% of uh, uh, Washington hotels could face foreclosure. And I think it's important to realize that many of these hotels that we see the brand outside as maybe a national brand we know are owned uh, by an independent person. Uh, some of the strongest hotel groups in Washington are AHOA and Kahoa. So the Asian American Hotel Owners Association and the Korean American Hotel Owners Association. And, and these people have really embraced lodging as a chance um, to secure their American dream and, and own their own property and put themselves on a limb. And uh, they're every bit as risk as our restaurants. On the bowling alleys, um, we all, I've never met a bowling alley that wasn't at the heart of their community. You know, that where people have birthdays, they're, we know the owner who's typically at the front desk, who's typically taking our shoes and, and, and talking about what's going on in our world and knows our families. I mean, that's just what bowling alleys are. They're about as close to community and independent business as you get. And for them to face closure for another amount of time, uh, many of them depended on, on holiday parties and office parties, which weren't going to happen anyway to survive and now have no revenue. Um, my heart's breaking with them today. So, um, and, and again, we could be doing different. We could be working together to provide safe outlets differently and help beat the virus together and have lower case counts together because we know these places can do it safe. Um, thanks so much. We really appreciate you taking the time um, and your thoughtful coverage and, and balanced coverage and encourage you to look at the data, look at the numbers. Um, there are definitely stories to be told um, in every corner of the state on this. So please, please order takeout tonight and get gift, gift cards for Christmas. Let's save as many of our small businesses as we can. And, and thanks for covering the, 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 the trials that our, our small businesses are going through. We do appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Good luck getting that ride to the airport, Anthony. Thank you.